Hi, it's Coach Hunter here with Mackenzie helping me out today. So today I want to talk about, we've been doing a bit of guard passing. We're going to talk about half guard today. So half guard is a powerful position on both sides. For a long time it was a very transitory position. It was a place you would get to help reclaim guard, like a full guard, or it was a place where you would be trying, like, kind of stuck while trying to pass. And you know, there are people who've gotten really good on both sides of half guard. So I wanted to address some of those concerns and how like, at least one basic passing method for half guard that should carry you a long way in your career. Okay? So let's talk about the anatomy of half guard, what it is. So guys, half guard, the full guard, is when I have both of Mackenzie's legs inside my legs. Okay? This is more of an open guard, but like a closed guard would be, of course, her fully inside my legs. Okay? Half guard is only any time I'm controlling just one of her legs. Okay? Traditionally, you go with an outside triangle, although I don't anymore. Okay? I often play with just one leg hooked behind her knee. I don't have to like twine my foot or anything like that. I'm just here. With or without this knee shield, okay? It doesn't, like that, we might, people call that Z guard sometimes. Um, this is kind of a Z guard type position. My feet get together or not. It's also a half guard. Okay? There's a lot of variation, a lot of terminology here which sometimes gets in the way, but really it's important to understand. Any of this, okay, yeah, half guard. If I, I could triangle or just cross my ankles or not just have them loose. I got my feet on the inside of her legs, okay, with or without like a lockdown kind of position. Okay, sometimes I like to have both feet just kind of on her calf here, stepping on the calf itself. Okay, you can see if she tries to pull her leg out, I can actually control her leg pretty well with this knee pinch type position. Okay? So from the bottom, that's what we're going for. And from the top, similar concept, but inside Kenzie's half guard. Okay. It's really important to understand what we're trying to do here. Okay. When I start, uh, it's very common to have your legs just kind of loose. Turn mm -hmm. Kind of loose here, both feet are out. I actually want to turn my heels when I'm sitting on my heels, just like I would if I'm in someone's guard, full guard. Okay. Just like I would if I'm inside someone's full guard, because I'm facing the wrong way, I'm going to change through that. I'm sitting down on my butt. The more my weight's forward, at least until I get good control of her upper body, the, the worse it's going to be for me. I don't want to start leaning in and giving her a deep half position. Okay, or get access to my body weight. And the butt. Okay, so, I'm here. Once again, always taking my time here, okay, making sure when I'm going to pass. It's really important that this... There's two spaces of concern. Her hip space, here, that's the battleground for the pass, and her cross body control. So Mackenzie's gonna have her arm in tight here, not wanting me to be able to control this side of her. Because if I get, if I get forward and I don't have this control, she can get underneath me and start coming up behind me or around, at least around to the side out. She can come up, okay? I need to be able to hold her down. So my first goal in here, I get double wrist control. I'm gonna start pummeling underneath her shoulder to get my underhook. I'm gonna work to a cross face grip with my hands connected. See my hands are, I have to do gable, but I gable for everything. So I can start applying pressure either across her jaw or under her chin and pinning her head to the mat this way, okay? It's surprisingly uncomfortable and it also stops them from coming out because her head's pinned to the mat, okay? One more time on that. I'm getting double wrist control. I'm pummeling in underneath her arm. Here, okay, I'm her flat on the mat. So I'm gonna get my weight forward, pressing down on her shoulder, I'm also sprawling my hips low. So if I'm driving forward, hips high, she can just roll me over really easily. I don't want that to come back. So I'm driving my weight low, getting my weight forward. So now she's trying to roll me, she's gonna be miserable. Okay, plus I can only close out here with my hands. So, I have my underhook, my cross body control, I have my cross face. Great, she pins the mat. I need to free my leg though. If I just lift my hips, I'm gonna fall up. So, my free leg, my knee stays down, and when my hips are still sprawled, I'm gonna reach the leg with the inside of her knee. Okay, I'm gonna use this foot pushing downward to keep her open as I lift my hips. I'm gonna walk my foot forward until my knee comes out. Yeah. You can see guys, my knees, hips are low and wide. My foot, I'm going to the wiper inside of her knee. 
When you say that, I'm going to lift my hips, my foot here. I'm going to inch forward as I lift my hips. I need to put my weight on my head so my knee comes out. From here, I'm going to finish essentially a knee cut pass. Grab my knee across. Okay. It's not uncommon for my partner to hold onto my ankles and my foot stuck. In that kind of case, it's fine. I'm just going to take my other foot, take my leg free. And then I complete my pass. Let's give me a head count. Three. Okay? Three step pass, guys. Okay? One thing that will happen. Uh, back down again. We kind of covered this the other day. Is that she's going to frame effectively against my shoulders right here. Okay? So I do have cross body control, but I can't get in deep and cross face her. She might be controlling the inside of my bicep here as well. Right? So I can't just cross face grip, I can't drive my weight in top of her and pin her down. Okay? So this is typically where I'm going to go and start attacking her frames. A lot of ways of doing that. But in this one where her arms are right now, I'm going to turn my shoulders and crash her elbow, get my arm through deep, get my grip. Okay? I'm making a peace sign, the arm is underneath her head, thumb goes in, and then just grip. You can also just gable grip, but I, I like this three finger grip. Okay. Did you learn that from Mike? Yeah, I got that from Mike Palladino. Now, Charlie Person showed this to me a long time ago, but I was like, oh, Charlie, this is dumb. This doesn't feel right. I'm not going to use it. So, here's what I know. I crash the elbow, pushing deep underneath, hands together. Okay, drag your head inward, shoot my arm deeper, fold it underneath, and get my dark script. So, now her half guard is actually great for me, because she's going to want to let that go so that she doesn't get choked. Okay. To finish, all we're doing is shrugging our shoulder blades together and flexing our arms. Okay, guys? So, some important concepts there. Remember, one more time, through the concepts. You might give her a minute. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going to show her again. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, because my neck can't take it. Okay. Um, you got to build up your neck, more bridges. So, the battle is for this space right here. Right here, by your head, by this close head. Okay? The second battle is for the space on her crossbody control. In the gi, I'd be gripping her collar here, that's that also is good crossbody control. Okay, you can grip her belt on this side to some degree. I, I prefer the collar in the gi. Or I still go under hook, honestly. I, just, uh, I do mostly no gi grips in the gi. Okay? So we have to establish control somehow. There are a lot of ways of doing that where I'll be examining more. If you think about switching to my first base position, okay? So this time with cross body control, now she can't come up, okay? You can look at all sorts of other options also for attacking these positions, okay? But for now, that's a good way to start. All right, guys. Try it out, let us know what works for you. Once again, uh, it's really important to understand that in this time, like, we need to keep it in your mind at least. Even if you're doing nothing at home, stay in shape, get, get some exercise, go for a walk, if nothing else. Uh, go take your family to go do that. Stay healthy, okay? Stay safe, and I'll see you on the mats.